I haven't seen any contemporary, you know, Jewish senators, Republican senators, uh, currently in the Senate. Yeah. Um, and I know, I know that's, I know that Israel and the security of the people in Israel is something that's very important to you. How did, how did that become something that was important to you? Well, first of all, I think the last uh, Jewish senator we had was Norm Coleman in Minnesota, who was a very good friend of mine. And, but I don't think you have to be Jewish to, to be pro-Israel. And that's the important part uh, that I've always pointed to. And I, first of all, just growing up in this community and being exposed to people in South Florida who care deeply about Israel is obviously the, the beginning of the groundwork for, for our sentiment. As a Cuban exile, I can tell you that on many occasions we found solidarity with the pro-Israel community on our cause. And one of the reasons why is because Fidel Castro was an ally of Yasser Arafat and all the most vile elements of the Middle East. And, and to this day, on in, in international forums, when there have been efforts to condemn Cuba, sometimes the votes have been like 113 to 2. And now sometimes it's 3 because of the Czech Republic, the State of Israel, and the United States. So I think that was the beginning of it, obviously growing up. Obviously, I have incredible friendships uh, and um, personal relationships with people who care deeply about the, the issue of Israel. My wife uh, helps run a family's charitable foundation whose giving is about 80% for Jewish causes and Israel. So all of that brings into familiarity. And then as a policymaker, the more you learn about the issue over, over the years, <clears throat> and this, this dates back to my time in the Florida legislature. You know, Florida is one of the first states in the country to divest of anything that invested in Iran. We're one of the first. So it just dates back uh, over a period of time. And then now, obviously, on the national stage, I always make the three arguments. Number one is that it's in our national security interest because Israel is the only pro-American, free enterprise democracy in the Middle East. Number two, there's a moral imperative, and that is that uh, you know, Israel is perhaps the only nation on earth created with a very unique purpose, and that is to serve as a homeland for an oppressed people. And it came as about as in the aftermath of the Holocaust, so that never again would there not be a place for the Jewish people to go if they felt if they face persecution, as they now have, uh, uh, you know, pretty consistently for 5,777 years, and and the third did I get the number right? I think yeah, you're good, you're good. And uh, just I think, made uh, it actually. Well, exactly, <laughs> just made it by a week here. And the third is um, the the reality that uh, if you look at the situation with Israel, they have no nation on earth would rather have peace there than the, the people of Israel, but they're confronted by a series of challenges, including the inability to have anyone to deal with on the other side, and a growing effort in the international community to de delegitimize Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. And that's something that's deeply concerning. Per, um, you mentioned Iran, and, and what's, um, for, for, those, for those of us who don't know, can you give us just a sort of a brief layman's terms uh, summary of this Iran deal? Yeah, here's the deal. You have the world's leading sponsor of terrorism, the Ayatollah of Iran, they literally sponsor multiple terrorist groups around the world responsible for the death of innocent Americans, the, the death and the maiming of hundreds of American servicemen. A lot of these IEDs in Iraq were built and supplied by the Iranians who continue to actively uh, supply terrorism around the world. Just 48 hours from today that we're taping this, uh, a group in Yemen sponsored by Iran fired rockets at American naval vessels. Okay? They are the world's leading sponsor of terrorism a maniacal, anti-American, anti-Semitic regime. And we have just, under this president, signed a deal that will turn over to them access to billions and billions of dollars, not to mention billions of dollars in cash right up front. That's the deal. In exchange for their promise not to enrich beyond a certain level. But they continue to build missiles, long-range missiles, capable of hitting Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, eventually New York, Chicago, Miami. Number, and, and eventually, they're going to move towards enrichment because they, can, they keep in place all of the infrastructure they would need for weapon, weapons-grade uranium. For my view is, this president wanted an exhibit for his library. He wanted to be the guy that did a deal in peace with Iran. And if it falls apart later, he'll blame it on a successor. It's a terrible deal. It makes the world more dangerous. It makes us lessons. And it rewards terrorism. And it's going to lead to a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Other than that, I guess, I mean... <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, on that cheerful note, well, a as a senator, what, what could you do? Is there anything that we could do to curtail the effects or to stop the Iran deal? Well, first we need to reimpose sanctions because the current sanctions on Iran expire. Let me tell you why that's relevant. Um, currently, under the system that we have now, the deal with Iran is not even a formal treaty. It is nothing but the president agreeing, as part of a political agreement, not to enforce current sanctions on Iran. The sanctions are there, but he's not going to enforce them. Those sanctions go away in, at the end of this year, so they have to be 
uh, reauthorized. The second is, I think we need to continue to press. Every time Iran violates this deal, as they continue to do, we need to continue to press to reverse this, which can be done by the stroke of a pen uh, by the next president. And the third thing I would say is look for continued opportunities to sanction new sectors. I actually passed sanctions on Hezbollah, which is an anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic, anti-American uh, terrorist group that receives a lot of funding and support. Uh, those sorts of sanctions also hit uh, Iran. And so look for ways to continue to sanction their missile programs and the like. And fourth is, you know, strengthen our allies in the region. You look at the recent mem memorandum of understanding between Israel and the United States that the president basically forced Israel to sign. It has some outrageous conditions, including that for 10 years Israel cannot lobby the U.S. Congress for additional funding. That's outrageous. That's ridiculous. That needs to be reexamined, and, and I hope we can have bipartisan support to, to could change that. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, bipartisan support, a lot of a lot of people are thinking, obviously, about the election, about presidents and, and Senate, and um, so with with the with the two presidential candidates that are that are available to us now, um, where do you see the the future of Israel's security, depending on who is elected? Well, let me be frank with you. This is not the choice I wanted us to have. Obviously, I was a candidate myself. I wish the American people had better choices than the ones before us today, and on the issue of Israel in particular. Uh, Hillary Clinton has been a strong supporter of, um, of President Obama's approach to Israel and, and to President Obama's approach to Iran, and my sense is that she'll continue with those policies. And Donald Trump on occasion has said things like he's going to be a, 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 a non-biased, you know, neutral arbiter in some sort of deal with the Palestinians, and I, I condemn that. I think that's not going to work, to be quite frankly. It actually endangers Israel. So that's why I think the election for Senate is so important, because no matter how you feel about this presidential race, I know for sure that our next senator has to be someone that's willing to stand up to the next president of the United States when they're wrong. And I'm the only one running for Senate in Florida that has stood up to both of these candidates when I believe they're wrong. My opponent, whose name is Patrick Murphy, has never once, has never once uh, stood up to Hillary Clinton on a single issue. And on the Iran issue, he says it's going to assure peace in our time. I mean, that's a quote, that he thinks this will help achieve peace in our time. The last guy that said that um, had regretted it for a long time. That was Neville Chamberlain in, in the 30s and, and his dealings with Hitler. 